In this video, I want to talk to you about the power of using templates within Audacity. Templates will be a resource for you to help speed up your editing process, to help speed up your recording process, and to make you a more efficient podcast editor. Hey, Mike Adams here with the Audacity Bootcamp. Thanks for joining me on this video. I use templates all the time in Audacity. At the time of this recording, I have three podcasts that I do, and I have a template set up for each podcast. And in the template, what I do is I put my intro music, my intro narration, and my outro music and my outro narration in the template so that I don't have to add those in every time I do a podcast episode. Every time I edit an episode or every time I record an episode, all of that stuff is already there in the podcast. I just dump the audio that I'm going to be editing into that template, and away I go. So let me show you what I mean. I have a screen open here before us that has a template in it. And this template is pretty simple. It's actually two tracks. I have a stereo music track, and I have a mono narration. One of the things you'll notice right away is that the name of this template is in uppercase. I just called it template. But you'll see that it's in uppercase. Not only that, but the labels on the tracks are all in uppercase. I did that in order to cue me in that, hey, I'm working on a template here. Because if I start getting busy putting audio in here and doing a bunch of editing, it's easy to forget that I'm working on a template. And if you save the thing, you're going to overwrite the template. If you save it with audio in there and, you know, the, the stuff that you're putting in your normal episode, you're going to just overwrite the template. There's nothing there to, to uh, stop you from doing that. So just as a cue for myself, I put everything in a template in uppercase. And that just flags it and says, hey, you're working on a template. Don't forget to do a save as. So when I come into a template like this and I open the template up, the very first thing I do is a save as. And I give it the name of whatever podcast and whatever episode I'm working on at the time. I do that immediately right up front so I don't forget later on. But looking at this template, you can see some of the power of it. I have, first of all, I have sync lock tracks turned on. And you can tell that because you can see the little clock here in the corner of the uh, track header of both these tracks. And that means that if I move the audio in one track, the audio in the track that's adjacent to it is going to move with it. And I did that on purpose. Let me show you why. If I come over here to the outro section, well, first of all, let me grab my uh, time shift tool here, and I come over into the outro section. If I move this top track, the narration goes with it. These, these tracks are always in sync. And I did that on purpose because I don't ever want them to get out of sync. I always want the uh, narration to be in sync with the music so that when I do the duck down of the music, the uh, narration is also is always right there with it, and they don't get lost in the shuffle. So I turn on sync lock tracks whenever I'm doing the template. It's the same thing here with the intro uh, song and the intro narration. I can move this around, and they'll be synced together all the time. That's not a problem. And then you'll notice at the bottom that I have a label track in here. And the reason I put a label track in is because any audio that I bring into my template after this, when I just drag it over and, and drop it into the template, which I'm going to show you in just a second, any new audio that I put in this goes below the label track. And that label track separates out groups of sync tracks. That's one of the functions of the label track. I talked about the label track in an earlier video. I'll put a card up above here. It should be showing right now that will take you to that label track video. I'll also have a link to it in the description below in case you want to go look at that. But one of the functions of the label track is to separate groups of synced lock tracks. So any track that I dump in here is going to automatically go below the label track, and it won't be synced to these first two tracks, which gives me the flexibility of moving things around. But let's zoom in here and listen to a little bit of this. I'm going to go to my selection tool, make sure I'm at the beginning here, and I'm going to zoom on in. And let's place the cursor right in here somewhere and listen to this duck out, listen to this narration. And again, I've got the playhead pinned, and so you're going to see the cursor position move to the center of my display, and the waveform's going to move through the track header, or the uh, playhead. So I'm going to push spacebar now and play. Hello, and welcome to the Lionsgate HOA podcast, the official podcast of the Lionsgate Homeowners Association. Lionsgate is a master plan community of 1,936 homes located in beautiful Gilbert, Arizona. And now, here's your host for this episode. So 
So that intro, I never have to edit again. Now, one thing that I do do with the intro, you'll notice that I leave the music on here for quite a, quite a little bit. That's because what I like to do when the actual podcast starts and I start talking and whoever I'm with starts talking, I like to duck that music down instead of just cutting it off or fading it out right away. I like to bring it down to a really low level and have it kind of playing in the background for a minute or so before I actually silence it. So that's why this music track is so long. I kind of left it that way on purpose. That's what I do with my templates. Again, that's just personal taste. Now, if I zoom back out here and I go to the outro, let's give it a listen. Zoom back in. Thank you for listening to the Lionsgate HOA podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And let your friends and Lionsgate neighbors know about the Lionsgate HOA podcast. For more information and the latest updates on the Lionsgate community, visit us online at livelionsgate.com. Until next time, goodbye. So that's my basic template. I never have to touch this stuff other than moving the uh, outro out further because I seldom have a five-minute podcast. I get kind of long-winded. Just a confession there. So let me show you what happens when I dump a piece of audio in this. First of all, I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to skip back to the beginning. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. And then I'm going to go to my Finder window. Again, I'm on a Mac. If you're in Windows, go to your uh, File Explorer window. And I have an audio track right here that's unrelated to this particular podcast. But I'm going to just drag this MP3 file into my Audacity and let go of it. And when I do, like I mentioned earlier, it puts it automatically below the label track. Now, again, this track that I just dumped in here has nothing to do with, you know, this template for this particular podcast that I do for our HOA. But I just want to show you, if I go up to the Time Shift tool, I can move this track around independent of the top two tracks because of that label track. And if I zoom out, in order to get a better view, I can take the outro and I can move it to the end. So as I'm editing this track at the bottom, I would normally solo that track while I'm editing. And normally I have two, maybe three tracks there because I'm seldom by myself when I'm doing a podcast. But I always do my podcasts in multi-track. So if there's, someone if there's someone with me, they have their own track. I have my own track. I record this stuff in my Zoom H6, and then I import it into Audacity here to do the editing. So if there was a second track in there, those two tracks would be synced together independent of the top two tracks. And I would solo that track. I would do my editing. When I finish my editing, I would simply drag this outro back to wherever it needs to be at the end of that track to where it sounds good and run through the whole thing, make sure that my final production is good. And then I would export it as a WAV file that I run through Alphonic and then export it from there into an MP3. Now, let me show you a real podcast. I've got it here in my window. This is actually one that I did a few days ago. This is a podcast that my wife and I have, and the top sound is some cafe sounds, you know, like you're sitting at a cafe, and there's people drinking coffee and stuff around you and conversation happening. And then this little guitar thing comes in, and then my friend Joe does the announcement. And then there's that label track to separate those top three tracks. And then my wife and I are in the two tracks that I've got kind of expanded out there. Below that, I put another label track because down below that, there's a thing called Whoosh, which uh, is just a transition that I use. It's kind of a little whoosh when we're going to change topics in midstream. So let me just play a couple seconds of this for you. I'm going to skip to start and let's push play. And so it starts up, the music's going, everything's fine. Remember I told you a second ago that I like to leave a little bit of music in. If you'll see this area right here where the music is, where I just duck it down while we're talking, it kind of just lends, lends a little bit of uh, ambiance to what's happening. So if I put my cursor here, I'm going to zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. So my playhead is right here at about uh, almost a minute, between 45 seconds and a minute. And if I push a uh, space bar here to play, we can listen to this. First of all, we want to wish you all a very happy new year. 
in 2021. Here's hoping that 2021 is much better than 2020 in just about every way. You mean so that it would suck less? Yeah, yeah, it would be suckless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it, I suppose. So the music just slowly fades out there at the end. It's playing in the background kind of soft just as we start to talk in order to transition more smoothly into the conversation that we're about to have. But that's the power of the template. I use templates all the time. And you should consider using templates as well if that's something that you're not currently doing because it does save a lot of time. I never have to go back through and auto-duck that music again. It's always there. It's always the same. I just open up the template. I dump my current audio into the template and I name the file, whatever I'm going to name the file and do my editing and I'm done and I never have to touch those top tracks. So if you like what's going on here at the Audacity Bootcamp, don't forget to subscribe. And you can reach me online anytime at audacitybootcamp.com. And again, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that I teach Audacity at udemy.com. The name of the course is Audacity Bootcamp Beginner to Advanced. And that's exactly what we do. I take you from beginning topics in Audacity as a novice editor, a novice recorder, and we move to more advanced topics within Audacity. As of this recording, it consists of 54 lectures in over six hours of on-demand video. And once you purchase the course, it's yours. You've got it forever. And you can always pull up episodes in it to, uh, or lessons in it, not really episodes, but you can pull up lessons in it to review topics, to go back and look at things and always have that as a resource. So if you are interested in that, take a look at that. Again, it's Audacity Bootcamp, beginner to advanced at udemy.com. And thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell and tell others about the Audacity Bootcamp. And I will see you in the next video.